Routing high-speed signals requires a thought-out approach. The two main parameters that need to be controlled for high-speed signals are their width and clearance to adjacent nets. It's no secret that high-speed signals propagate along transmission lines and require a certain impedance, which is calculated from the structure and parameters of the materials in the layer stack. Before routing critical nets, create profiles with the required impedance for differential pairs and for single lines in the layer stack manager. The width of the conductors on each layer will be calculated automatically. These impedance profiles can then be used in design rules for high-speed nets. For single lines, create a width rule for the desired class and then select the appropriate profile. The width of the conductors will be applied automatically. For differential pairs, a separate rule is created where you'll also need to select an impedance profile for the differential pairs. Now we can start routing. The width of the conductors will match the impedance profiles for both single conductors and differential pairs. When routing differential pairs, a separate tool is used that preserves the coupling of the pair's conductors and the gap specified in the rule along the entire length, which is important for impedance uniformity. Make sure that the value of the trace width is taken from the profile. When routing high-speed signals, in addition to the width of the trace, it's important to take into account the gap between the traces. In the interactive routing tool, you can turn on the display of clearance boundaries. You may notice that the clearance of single conductors and differential pairs is different. This is because two appropriate clearance rules have been created in the design rules. One between single conductors, and one between differential pairs and single conductors. It's worth noting that there are certain recommendations for the clearances between high-speed circuits. For single conductors, the clearance must be at least three times the height of the conductor above the reference plane. The thickness of dielectrics in our case is 0.12 millimeter. If the thicknesses are different, the lower value is taken to estimate the gap. Therefore, the gap between the conductor is indicated as 0.36 millimeter. The recommended clearance from differential pairs to other conductors should be at least five times the height. These clearances can create problems with routing conductors in tight spaces, such as underneath microcircuits. To create local restrictions on routing in narrow places, special rooms are used. If a wire is routed to an area of a room, the width or gap rule created for that room is automatically applied. The room must be given a name. You can place a room by going to the Design Rooms menu. In a separate rule, using a special query for the room, a different value of the clearance between the tracks is specified, which makes it possible to route more densely in this area. Once the topology of high-speed signals is ready, there may be situations where you need to change their width. For example, if the layer stack changes. The width of the transmission lines and the impedance profiles will be recalculated automatically. The board will need to update the width of all high-speed nets. Looking at the properties of the traces on the board, we still see the old width values. To update, select the required conductors and differential pairs and run the route retrace selected command. The width of the conductors and the structure of the differential pairs will be rearranged to accommodate the new widths. The changes will also affect the already placed net length matching elements, such as accordions, trombones, and sawtooth. 